Welcome to the trading game. I know there's been a lot of anticipation over this. I've been kind of pumping it up here the last week or so. Um, mm -hmm. Really excited about my results testing this thing out. Uh, I've only got about four months worth of data of my own, but we've got a lot of people crunching numbers on it and going back. The problem is a lot of the back testing uh, was testing every day. And you know, I had taken out news. I had taken out major holidays and the day after the major yeah, holidays. Yeah. So um, that is going to affect our results somewhat. Um, what I'm going to say is that this is this is something that's different. It's it has a ton, yeah. it has a ton of potential. Okay, uh, this can be used on different instruments, different times. I'm still moving people also. Let's just go back. Let's get everybody muted. I'm going to take a minute and just mute everybody that's not slick enough to figure out that they're on the mics. Okay, if you can hear me, turn your mic off if you've got background noise. Make sure you're muted. Everybody should be muted. Everybody should be muted. Mute yourselves. Everybody mute yourselves. Hit your little microphone button. Uh, that's most of you. Stealth. Muted. I'm just going to wait until everybody's got a muted mic next to the name before we get started. That'll help. Braids. Muted. Okay. I think we're just about there. Formerly Yank, I'm going to mute you. If I see you not muted, I'm going to mute you. And we'll get everybody muted. Kuga, got to mute you. Okay, I think that's about it. I think we're in good shape. <clears throat> okay, where was I? So, uh, there's a lot to be done on this. I'm going to I'm going to give you links to the original videos from the original strategy where he talks about where this works the most. And he's he does a lot of the work as far as uh, showing an equity curve, talking about risk management, things like that. So I definitely encourage you to watch this guy's videos. It's trading busters. If you Google them, it it kind of looks sort of corny. I mean, they've got some corny videos and stuff, but they just come right out and tell you, you know, some of it's funny, but it's true. Some of it. So uh, I haven't seen a lot of this guy's stuff. I don't know much about him, but you know, on this front right here, uh, he's definitely got something that's you know unique and interesting. So I, you know, I want to give them all the credit. Uh, what we're doing to it is changing it. He said it only worked on a few forex pairs. Ten years, robbing him. King Kong chimp, you got to go. Okay, but we're adapting it to different instruments. Uh, we're 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 changing the time frames that we use to build this range. We're looking for periods of consolidation and different instruments might go through those periods at different time, depending on, you know, where in the world this stuff's trading, what have you. So a lot of it is going to be up to you to kind of go through. If, if you have something you want to trade it on that we're not already working with, go test it. It's very easy to test. You find a, a, a period that's kind of like Asia, you know, where we know we're getting our accumulation. You start your range there and then you try to trade into the volatility. So... That's kind of just the basics of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop a document in the text here in the chat. A link to a document. And that's going to give you the trading view indicator, uh, the links to the videos, the rules for the strategy, the pairs that it was recommended for. You'll pretty much have everything you need just in this document. So let me find this real quick. Uh, copy text. Okay. Okay. So everybody grab that link. It's a. Uh, it's kind of like the playbook. It's just a live link. You know, that's out there. You can save the link. Uh, make a copy of the document if you want to. Whatever. And I'm going to pull that up so uh, YouTube can kind of see what we got going here. And you guys, and I'll just take you through it, what we're looking at here. So Robinhood strategy provided by the trading game, right? Here's the links to 
these two videos, London one, London two. I would watch these videos and, you know, it'll answer a lot of questions that maybe I miss here. This, this is pretty much everything we're going to, that's done in the videos is what we're doing in the strategy. We're just trying to adapt it to other instruments and some different time frames. Like they trade it once a day. We're already got two sessions that we have really, really good win rates on, uh, trading it over like London and then picking it up again, uh, before New York open. And I'm actually having as good of, uh, a win rate on the New York AM session as we were on the London session. So, you know, and I'm looking at a PM session also. I've been playing with some ranges, looking for like some lunch consolidation. It's saying the link is invalid for the indicator. All right, hold on a second. Let me go mute everybody now because we're still getting background noise. I wish there was just a overall mute. Mute everybody. Well, that's a trip. So when I when I click on it, it's supposed to be shared. The link works for you. Okay, so some people the link works for. If the link works for one, it should work for all because I've got it set up for viewers. So if this if you're having a problem with it, I'll get it out to you in the in the um, Robin Hood channel on the stream. So if you can't see any of this now, I'll drop the videos straight there, or what have you. So don't worry about it. Um, the trading view robin hood indicator and invalid link all right let me fix that real quick i told you this wasn't going to be um polished <laughs> i warned you ahead of time all right so trading view link is here copy link address Edit, apply, all right, so refresh that document and see if you can now see, get the Robin Hood indicator and let me know if it works. Link works, okay. All right, so Again, we'll kind of go back over. Here's the London. The videos, if you can't get the videos for some reason, I'll drop them. Uh, I'll figure out a way to work, make that work. I'm going to give you, you know, we're going to go over it. I just recommend you seeing it the way he presents it as well. Uh, because he does have a lot of good information in there as far as the equity curve, the risk management. This this can't be something that you YOLO just because it has a high win rate. A high win rate. Because if you YOLO on the trade that loses, you're going to bust your account. All right, so it needs to be, there, there's people that have been trading it for a while uh, that reached out to me once they saw what I was doing and recognized it, and I got some tips from them on what they're doing as far as, you know, just, just taking it as a consistent trade uh, that compounds over time, and it's, you know, it's consistent. I mean, this all this guy, one of them, that's all he trades. He just gets his money and, you know, moves on. So this isn't something, at first I thought maybe we could use this to YOLO, you know, uh, evals and stuff like that um, but yeah you, you'd have to be careful with that I'm sure some are going to try it I'm probably going to try it myself but yeah, I'm not going to recommend awesome. it alright so still muting people okay here's the pairs and what they do is they trade all six of these they look for trades on all six of them and the win rate going across all the pairs is if you just take the first trade it's 68 percent now these are his numbers we're trying to validate but not all of us trade these we're not doing all six of them but uh so 60 68 percent i believe when you add the second trade which is the hedge it runs your win rate up to 90 something percent but if that second trade loses you're going to take a minus 5r hit so you need to figure your risk out, you know, half a percent, one percent, two percent at the most, you know, whatever. Um, but that's going to be for everybody to try to kind of figure out for themselves how they want to how they want to do this. I've only been trading it, you know, a couple weeks live myself and I've been doing it on evals. 
Uh, I haven't taken a loss yet on any live trades that I've taken. So I've been putting them in the Discord. Um, you know, before I take them, I show the setup and then take the trade and you guys are able to follow along and watch, you know, what's going on. Okay, sorry, I'm reading stuff here. Let me get back. All right, so that's the document. It'll also be posted in the Robinhood um, uh, forum. So here's the rules for it. You're going to use a five-minute time frame. You're, all you need is an EMA 55, EMA 100, and the indicator, okay? Your, these are New York Times. So the first period is from midnight to 24, which is, I mean, 8, 8, 8 p.m. to midnight. So Asia, basically, coming up, you know, towards London. And then the second period is 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. Now, sometimes you might still be in a trade from this one. They, they can run pretty long, so you just have to figure it out. But I've been getting out most of the time from the first trade with a win, setting up my second trade, and it, they've all won. I haven't lost a New York a.m. session since I've been doing it. So that's 25 trades in a row now, I think, something like that. I'll show you the stats on it. Uh all the rules are here and once I go through and actually show you how to set it up all this will make sense Okay, so between the video seeing me set it up and having these rules. You're not gonna have a problem. It's gonna be very very simple um, All right, so I'm trying to catch some of your comments here It looks like not enough of you can see the screen does it work on currency futures? I don't know. Um, you know, that's something. This is really easy to backtest. You can go figure it out. That doesn't take long at all to set them up. So I'm going to recommend that you go through and you test what, uh, you know, what you want to try to run it on. Right now, I'm only running it on ES for myself. And ES is straight kicking ass for the last four months. I've lost three trades in four months. So that's I'm up to like a 97, 98% uh, win rate on it. But that's only four months. So, you know. I don't know for me it's hard to believe that you can have four months with that high of a hit rate and then it you know drop in half the next four months or something it just seems like if you once you go that long uh it should it should stay that way but we know that isn't the case all right so this document will be out there um let's go back through some of the testing Okay, so these are my backtest results going back to November 1st. I took out uh, holidays, before and after Thanksgiving. I should have took news out of here too. Uh, there should have been some news in here. So the, even the news won, I think, in uh, unless this day was an NFP. I don't know. I should have checked. Here, we can find out real quick. We'll know if it's NFP right here. It could very well be because this is 8:30 right here, so this would have been this could have very well been NFP. It dumped News Campbell, so that's great actually. That just means that that's one less loss. Um, can somebody check? Well, actually, I'm gonna check. I want to know. I want to know before I get forward. Go, go moving forward. Uh, I love this economic calendar because I can go back in time. We want uh, December 15th. Sleep up and take. I need you. No, it wasn't. I must have just been a straight, straight dump. Then I don't know. December fifteenth. Yeah. Looking at the picture, it looked like NFP just from the you know the huge drop, but maybe not. But anyway, no news, no holidays, no days after major holidays. So some of our backtesting results varied because I took that stuff out and everybody else didn't. But through January, uh, 54 out of 57, there's my three losses. You're not really supposed to trade it on Monday and Fridays. And two of my losses were on Friday. 
So these are other factors that you can figure in uh, to your trading. If I would have traded according to the rules, though, I would have lost every other Monday and Friday, which were winners. So for me, it kind of, I, I didn't see if it was worth, you know, not trading on those days and then seeing what the math was. But I just wanted to see what every day did, you know, just kind of validate his, his uh, trading it every day. I came up with 54 out of 57, 202 points profit, 42R. This is the number that, that needs to matter. You need to figure out. All right, still looking for background noise. I thought we were full, but I guess people keep either leaving and then others come in and they're not muted. So anyway, so what this means is that after every trade, these are mechanical numbers. This is no interference. This is set it, go to bed, wake up, and don't touch anything, okay? This is what was left on the table. Had you figured out a way to trail, had some kind of a mechanism to catch the, you know, a runner to do something. So to me, this is very, very important because it is a high, you know, the, that second trade, if you lose it, look at the points, right? I mean, you're minus 34 points on this loss, minus 22, minus 25. It's a five R loss if you lose that second trade. So there's ways we're looking at to mitigate that, different ways to take the trades, different way to manage risk, maybe not going 4X, maybe going 2X and looking for break evens. All kinds of different combinations of things between these two trades and the different risk profiles, targeting trails, stuff you can do. So just keep in mind that this number here is something you can tap into to try to mitigate this. All you gotta do is catch one of these, you know, uh, catch a piece of one of these 40 point moves here, 30 point move here, and you go, that goes a long way, right? And there's 44 points here. There's just a ton of points. Here's 64 and a half points on this one. It just, it just went straight up, right? I mean, so, right? <laughs> we got out right here. Here's where we won our trade. We could have cut risk in half, done something, trailed using some of this risk, you know, and just caught it, right? I mean, so that's something you want to keep in mind. Yes, I'm recording the stream right now. We are recording. All right, so I'm not getting a, a lot of your comments. It's coming in too fast. I'm just going to keep going, and as, as I'll, when we get to time for questions, then I'll start looking at it, but I want to get through this as much as I can. Um, so these are my uh, London, uh, the uh, 8 to midnight range, and then this is my AM. Uh, I just started in November. I didn't get any farther. I've just been so busy with everything else, but... Same thing, no news, no Thanksgiving, no day after Thanksgiving. Uh, 17 for 17, 141 points, 17R. If you just took this mechanical trade every day, this is what you would have made in November. And this is what was left on the table. And it's the same, the same thing. You've got 56 points, 75 points. If you figure out a way to get some of these points, you're going to, I mean, I'm going to crush it because that's exactly what I'm looking at is I'm looking at this number right here. This is great. But I'm looking at what can be done, you know, beyond just the mechanical side of it. I don't mind getting my hands dirty and getting in there and trailing some stops and figuring some stuff out to try to catch a bunch of this stuff. So uh, then this is your mama's um, back test results. I don't know that these, I, I don't think they were taken out for news or holidays. Uh, yeah, see, I didn't trade on the second because it was the day after the first. So it looks like they didn't account for that. It looks like. Uh, no, no days taken out for NFP, CPI. So any of these losses could be NFP, CPIs, PPI, whatever. Uh, we, we just have to find out. But that said, it was still a 77% hit rate. It only came up minus 28 points, but there were 482 points left on the winners. Just this trade alone, 82 points, right? We got out right here. You know, there's... There's a lot of opportunity there. So that's the part that's exciting for me. What timeline are you on? Um, this is all uh, New York time. Any of the times I mentioned are New York times. <clears throat> and then here's some more results. Um, this one was 216 points to the good, 1100 points still on the table. This is probably NQ. Or a combination of ES, Euro USD, and Q. Um, 
if you were trading those in February, you had action at another 1,100 points. So some more from Yoama, not complete. And again, none of these losses are taken into consideration the holidays or the news days. So I don't know how much that affects what they had, but my results is what I've been going on. And, you know, um, that's how I've been approaching it. So if you're going to do back testing, you need to take that into consideration. And, okay, so that's back testing stuff. Um, we've also got, we've been in a back test channel over here. This has kind of been our lab. Um, doing a lot of work trying to, you know, figure this stuff out. So, and this is just the beginning of it. I mean, you know, everybody I hope gets involved, shares the results, answers questions about what they're finding. Uh, there's all kinds of ways to enhance this, come up with different ideas. Uh, this guy, Trader BCL, he found a little 30 minute window uh, between 9 a.m. and 9.30 and he built his range there and he just took the first trade and these are his hit rates for five years worth of trades, right? We're in the 64 to 71%. And all of you know that if you can get up around 64, 65% on a one R even, you're gonna make good money. So what I'm showing you today is just the kind of the basis. I mean, you can probably trade it just as it is, especially if you use the pairs that they recommend and follow that, you know, that's probably gonna work. And then get in there and use this principle of this hedging and this range building. Because I'm going to show you when I do the back testing why the range works so well. Hold on a second. The logic of this trade is just, it's incredible. Uh, I can look at the charts and I just see wins when I'm setting it up. Because I'm like, price is either going to go here or it's going to go there. And I see I'm covered on both sides. All right, so here's what the indicator looks like. What we were doing at first was we had a had that sessions um, uh, the sessions indicator, which was already out there, and we would set the times and it would give us the high and the low, and then we'd have to grab a fib. I don't even think I have a fib for it now. Anyway, uh, we would fib the get the 10 and the 90 and have to do it all manually. So we got rid of that need, got the indicator. It draws the range for you, gives you a four hour range. It gives you your zero, 10, 90, and 100 fib levels. And what you're gonna do, and this is, this is why it's mechanical. Um, so here's my 55 EMA and here's the 110, right? Got two EMAs, 55 and 100, sorry. The red is the 55. If the red is on top, you're bullish. If the red is on the bottom, you're bearish. It doesn't matter if the slope, this can be sloping down, like it's going to be bearish, but as long as it's on top, you're trading it as a bullish move, okay? So like even here, if you get to a place at the end of the range and it's doing this and it's coming down, it's still above the 100, so you're taking the bullish trade. All right, and you're always gonna take the counter trend trade. So if we're bullish, we're gonna take a counter trend trade. You're always setting your trade up either on the 10 or the 90. So if I'm gonna go short here, because we're bullish, I'm gonna use my short position tool, and I'm gonna short just the range, okay? And I'm going to set this for 1R. So that's the first trade. That's how easy that is. When, when your range gets created, you set your first trade up. If price is right here in this 10% area, when the range figures, just mark it in. You don't set your limit order. You just go ahead and mark it in. you got plenty of time. You know, if it, if it immediately, uh, you know, it would have to get up here to trigger you in anyway. So actually, it would have to be up here for you to mark it in. You wouldn't mark it in down here. If it, was, if it was in the upper part and you set this trade up, you would just mark it in. So the trades is, you're going to have a limit order right here. All 
right? That's your entry. This is going to be your take profit, obviously. And here's your stop loss, right? Pretty, pretty self-explanatory. Then you set up the second trade, which is your hedge. And it's going to look like this. You're going to go the opposite direction. So we're going long when we get stopped out. So right here on this line exactly, you're going to set a trade. You're going to use the same stop loss and you're going to go half R. If you have to get stuck between a 47 and a 53 or something like that, I'm taking the 47 because I don't want to miss by a couple ticks and have it come all the way back against me for a 5R loss. So I'm going to cut it a little bit short right there. So on this one, would have took a while, right? Short. Would have took a while, but we would have got tagged in right here uh, towards the end of the day. <laughs> I don't know that I would have waited that long, but there's no limit on it. I think they said they cut it out, you know, uh, an hour before the end of the day or what have you. So uh, it took forever, but it, you don't actually get tagged in until you're right here and you're going short. So that's a winner. Okay, so this one is a, we're bearish, so we're going to go long. And we're only trying to get... So we're going to go long because we're bearish. So we're setting it at the lower um, range up to the top, 10 to the 90. And this one gets triggered in right here, goes up, and it wins. Okay. If I would have had the second trade set up, obviously, you set up both. And this one is just based on the levels from the first trade. So you're going to match that area right there. And then you just bring this up to half R. So when this one gets to 0.5 R, that's what you want. This one is for, if you went one contract here, you're going four contracts here. And what that does is, is there is no break even. You either win or you lose. Um, there's, you can change it to make it break even. But for right now, when you go 4X, what this does is it replaces the loss from this and adds one R, so you come out one R on top. So anytime you win, it's going to be one R, but if you do lose, then, you know, it would, and for you to lose, it would have to, you know, uh, tag you in here, come down here, and turn around right here, and then rip all the way back up here, which is an unnatural move, especially looking at market structure and stuff like that. Um, anytime I look at it, I'm just like, well, that doesn't look, like what I would expect to happen. So it's it's the logic of it is, is really interesting. Let me get my, I lost the uh, Discord here. Where is the link and the indicator? Okay, everybody still hear me good? Check, check. Okay, good. All right, so, and on the indicator, what you can do also is you can change your time frame. So here's your 20, your eight o'clock to midnight. So if, say I wanna go do the other one from um, two to six, I go two to six. And now it changes and it moves over to here. 
So for this one, this would be a bigger range, but we're bearish, so we're gonna go long. And here's a good example. You just make it a one R trade right there. Set your other one up to then go short right here. Match that level, make this half R. Or like I said, if you have to go above or below, I would go below, make it less just so you don't get stopped out by one tick. So this is one where you would just mark it in, okay? Because you're at the level, you're in between the 10% and the 100 or the zero right here. So you would just mark it in right here. And whichever way it's going, you know, you're, it's a five minute candle, so you got time right here. You catch it right here somewhere. You just mark it in, set your levels. And this one doesn't win by much, but that's all you need right there. So that's a winner. And the reason, I think the strength of this, okay, the strength of this is that we've got a four hour period right here. And we're at the top or the bottom of a four hour range and we're anticipating the reversal. That's why it's a counter trend. So even though we're bearish here, and this is a perfect example of just picking up a pullback, right? That's all this is. We're bearish. We got a pullback. We went counter trend, uh, expecting that, you know, if you're at the bottom of this range, most likely liquidity has been swept, right? You're, you've taken four hours worth of liquidity at least by the time you get down here. So we would all be looking for longs here anyway. Right? This is where you're looking for your silver bullets. And I think this is why this is strong is because you catch in these time frames, like through uh, coming up, you know, prior to London, uh, you've got your range set and you're trying to catch, you know, a move. Uh, it could very well be, you know, um, the London silver bullet or when you go into the New York Open, same scenario. But the logic of it is really good because if you miss on this, say you get tagged in, and it doesn't go all the way up. It's not this deep of a pullback. Well, then it throws you right into a trend-friendly trade. Say I would have got stopped out here. Say I didn't go up here, right? Say this was my target and we missed. Well, you're right into a trend-friendly trade that brings you back into a winner. So this is a really, really, really powerful concept to, to just look at when you set it up. You're like, yeah, where else is it gonna go, right? If it doesn't pull back up here and we're in this trend, then, you know, boom. So I love the, the, the logic of it. It just, it just makes sense to me as far as, um, you know, trends, liquidity, sweeps, things like that. It's pretty cool. So this is the, let's see, this is what? This is going into New York AM. So I'm gonna set up another one. So we are bullish, right? Uh, 55 is above the 100. So we're gonna go short. We're going to go short from this level down to this level. And we're going to make it one arm. And then we set up our second trade to go along here. Half arm. So let's see. Um, we went short. We would have went short here. Let's see how this works. Draw this out. So yeah, we won down here somewhere. Right there. Yeah. Didn't get stopped out, but <clears throat> say we didn't say the uh, target was down here, say we didn't get our profit, then we're thrown right into a trend-friendly trade. Uh, this one we might have got stopped out though if we didn't win. So luckily we won, but it was pretty close right here. What's the average amount of wins in a streak before a loss is taken? Um, we don't really have an average. Like I said, I've only taken three losses in four months. And they weren't, you know, back to back or anything. Uh, who we got making noise? Let me go mute some more people here.
yeah so uh, like i said i've got four months of data that i went back i can only go back that far on a five minute chart i recommend everybody you know get in and get into fx replay or whatever you're using try to you know if you can figure out a way to back test it without news and holidays you know it doesn't matter so much on on other trades you know setups if you you know get a news day in there or something and it, it doesn't go one way or the other but because of the the uh the five the five hour loss you want to make sure you're back testing exactly the same don't you know don't trade a you know don't back test an nfp and then you know you that's your loss for the month or whatever you take five hour loss take a couple of those because of a holiday or an nfp and a cpi or whatever that can skew the results just ridiculously so My thought process would be if the average streak is seven before a loss, take a five win streak and wait for a loss. I thought about the same thing. I thought about even that's not trading it every day and coming into it with a 95% rate and, and going higher with my risk. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's going to be for everybody to try to figure out. You know, there's several of us looking at different ways to do this. And now there's going to be like hundreds of us looking for different ways to do this. And I think, you know, the way I'll put our heads together, we're going to come up with something that's, you know, just ridiculous. Might back test what happens if you take the both trades, even if the first one wins, which might mitigate. Yeah. Um, I've even thought about putting a third trade on. <laughs> right? Because eventually, you know, it can only do so much. And... Now, I need to cover that, too. Someone said that certain prop firms don't allow Martingale, uh, Martingale, is it Martingale, type trading. Uh, I think it was TFT. Apex doesn't show anything for their, you know, whether or not you can take that or not. So, um, I, I don't see any difference between me losing this trade and just, you know, getting back in, reversing my bias, and, you know, going back in. So, um wouldn't be a martingale because more of a flip with higher risk and i was doing this before i knew this i mean there's been times when i knew prices going against me i got it wrong and i reversed my position uh, sized up a little bit and and you know took a nice win and got my money back so you know um i don't think we're gonna have any problems with it it's gonna be good for the days when as a trader you know for sure it's gonna go up or it's gonna go down yeah and like you know here's the here's the trades i've been taking in the streams um, so I think I was doing all in back tests yeah so you guys have been seeing these um, where's the one I wanted to see that look like a news be a news trade this one <laughs> so you want a new strat you want to you want a strat that covers you know whichever way it could possibly go that that might be something to look at you know back test these with the am session on a news day and see if you how it works on the news you're not trading the news you're in the news you're in the trade you know long before the news starts right this would have been a six o'clock entry and it played out to where you know by the time 8 30 hit uh, it was right where it needed to be so yeah I, I don't think i knew news was coming for this one i was a little bit surprised but it was a good surprise so that worked out okay uh so i'll set up a couple more here so when the emas cross here's a good good topic too sometimes you get an ema cross right at the end of your range right they're flat or they're doing this right here but it's here we have a couple different approaches on this. Some of us were saying, just don't take the trade. What I was doing was I was looking to the left and getting market structure and using market structure as my bias. So if I was uh, on this one, I would have been, this is kind of a tough one, but, you know, do your uh, low, higher high, what have you. Uh, did we break here? No, we didn't really. Didn't break this low, but this low didn't break this low. I would still probably be, no, this is a tough one. So a bad example. Some of them are a lot easier to read. If it's an easier one to read and you're just in a place where they cross, just go with market structure. And I was 100% on those trades. I just followed market structure 
and if I was long I went short if it was bearish I went long so on this one we're lucky we've got the EMA here we're long so we're gonna go short short here it's a nice range on this one this one looks like probably Definitely going to get the stage going because this has been just a nightmare with this many people in here. All right, so on this one, we were going short. This might have been a loss. See, we lost right there. Yeah, this one would have been a loss. Friday, January 26th. I bet that was NFP. How did I have that for a win? Friday long, January 26th. Sure. All right. Might have messed one up there. So out there, back in. Yeah. Might have messed that one up. All right. So with all this said, does anybody have any questions on anything I didn't cover? What happens when the mass flip before the trade got us in? The mass flip. I'm not sure what that is. Market structure. Try taking it the other direction of oh, the moving averages. Well, you're looking at where the where they are at at the end of the range. So here's the four hour range. You would be looking at just this little portion right here. And more times than not, you know, by quite a bit, there's there's a gap here. There's there's room. So this one's bullish. We go short. Uh, looks like a win. And even if not, this one would have been went up here. We went long here. Point five, easy winner. Yep. Now I haven't tried taking it the other direction. Um, just lots of you know, lots of different options to try to you know maximize the potential of this concept of using the hedge. So I'm going to leave it to you guys to go through and you know see what you come up with, test it on your favorite instrument. Uh, you know, find that that time frame that uh, you know leads into some volatility yeah I know Jack it's you know it's just really you know crazy <laughs> it's straight up crazy so I think I'm losing I ran out of indicator here so if I do a replay yeah it shows back up Let's see what happens with this one.
it doesn't take much to win. You know, when you go 4x, if you're if if you lose this trade, you're most likely you've got some momentum because you're either in a trend, um, you're at the hour, you know, end of that period, you're, you're either reversing or you're continuing on. If you're getting consolidation, you're still going to do one or the other. So, do you wait for a close or a price hit? Um, not sure what you mean on on that. If price hits one of the limit orders, that's the end. So you're you're out at that point. Yeah, uh, eight o'clock to midnight, New York. That's the one that's that the strategy was built around an, a London session type move. So right now I've got it on the wrong. I change. I think I changed the time frame. Yeah. So it would have been eight o'clock to midnight. This is the one that has all the data and you know all of that. So I was just greedy, and I wanted to know if I could take two trades. <laughs> so um, makes sense why our January twenty sixth was off. Yeah, and I ran into some issues where I was going back and there was daylight savings I didn't consider. So there's stuff like that you got to figure out too in your back testing. If you go back, was it daylight savings? Was the range off? You know. Um, does it matter how far the range is off? I don't know. Uh, I moved one back when I was initially testing for the New York AM. Uh, I moved it back like I don't know. I changed the changed it to a three hour range. It was like six fifteen to three fifteen to six fifteen. Oh, that's that's why that's why my Friday missed. The one that, yeah, that Friday was a different time range. What I'm doing right now is two to six, but on that Friday, yeah, let me go see this real quick. Uh, I want to double check. Friday, January Okay, so now we got a different range time frame here. Still going short. It still looks like it's going to lose. No, that was it. So it won to the tick when I changed the time frame from 2 to 6 for 3.15 to 6.15. So my back testing was right. I just had a different time frame there. But we changed it later. Someone else did some testing and they came up with, now I need to question their back test because they said they had 100% win rate for that month too. So, you know, probably rush this out a little bit quick. <laughs> but, uh, like I said, uh, you know, there's more work to be done and there was too much work to try to figure all of this out and, and you know, cover every dot, every I and dot across every T. So really just want to put it out there to give you guys something to work with and look at, try to adapt uh, and improve it to your own, you know, whatever you can do. And then please share the results uh, so that we can kind of work together on this. It's pretty straightforward though, as far as, you know, the setting up the orders. Um, I set those limit orders up and, you know, it's, uh, I go do something else. You know, I come back, I wake up later and I've, you know, I've been looking at it and uh, it wins. I get up, I set up the next trade and run with it. And it's been doing great. Yes, we do have some pine. Uh, we've got some Python people working on it also trying to, you know, go go back for some years and see how this does. But for me, you know, past results don't indicate future, you know, whatever that saying is. Uh, with what I'm seeing for right now, I don't care what it did three years ago. Is it stop loss seconds?
stop watching this stream and go to YouTube? Well, thanks, Mona Tadak. Uh, a lot of us don't care much about GTA. I stopped playing games when I started trading. I don't have enough time to devote to both, so. I'm all in on this one. Any more questions? Uh, I've been using the 315 to 615. Uh, I may have swapped over the last couple days. Uh, I guess I'd have to look at... Let's see if we can see on the last couple days that I did it, what the day, what the time was. So this one looks like two to six. So yeah, I did switch over to two to six for the uh, second trade. This one looks like two also, so yeah. Um, back test it, back test it, find out. I'm gonna probably stick with the two to six because I like the four hour idea. But, and for myself, I'll be honest, I'm going to put some micros on it. I'm gonna keep the risk small. I'm gonna see how it does over time. I'm gonna build my confidence. Uh, once I get up, you know, have a nice win streak. Because right now, it's kind of weird winning, you know, four in a row and you're still kind of worried about taking a loss because you know you'll you'll lose four days, you know, four days worth of progress. And that's, psychologically, it's kind of difficult having that in the back of your mind. So um, now I'm at, you know, I won five or six. I kind of feel like, okay, I could take a loss right now. And that helps my mentality as I keep winning. Now I feel like I'm in profit, you know. Um, I've asked myself what would happen if I took two back-to-back -to -back losses and I was 10 on all of a sudden, would I be able to keep going? I don't know. If I managed my risk right and I was half a percent, one percent, yeah, I probably could. Um, but if you're risking three and four percent and you take a couple losses, you're probably gonna get scared right out of it. Uh, the guy that's been trading it, I, he wasn't able to make it, it looks like. It was, um, Yeah, I don't see him. Uh, he's been helping kind of with the testing and stuff and uh, talking about it. And he just, you know, just keeps taking the trades. And he says it's, uh, you know, he called it a cheat code. Right on, Art. Yep. Um, back test channel, you know, will be open. The forum channel for this, we can put our information in it. Um, you know, if you have any ability to code automatic back testing you know strategies you want to put it on there let us know what your results are that's great this is not financial advice right this is educational <laughs> this is uh something i found that i was excited about and it all i had was reason to share it right i mean it's, it's done nothing but good for me since i found it but i don't know what's going to happen in a month the market's different right now and kind of like the ap strategy it worked great uh for me I mean, I just killed it every day until the, the beginning of the year, and then I started not seeing the setups as much. I wasn't losing. You know, it wasn't like I was getting faked out and the strategy wasn't working. The just setups weren't there as much. So, you know, the market's going to be the market, and we just have to adapt to it as we go. If we can find something where we get some edge for a little while, we we'll use it. If next year this doesn't work, then we find something else. Uh, now I'm saying if I'm getting these steps right, New York AM, 2 to 6 AM, yes. Yeah, just remember it's always going to be a counter counter 10 trade. Set second limit for 0.5 TP. Yes. Right, and there's sometimes where you don't get you don't get triggered in. It just ran away, you know, and it never did come back to hit my, you know, tar my enter. So that's going to happen on occasion. Not didn't happen a lot, but like on this month here um, so three of the last four days or so, uh, limit not hit. So, you know, no trade, but not a big deal. Two consecutive losses will wipe out half a month of progress. Yeah, possible. 
But again, remember, focus on this. There were 200 points made. There were 823 available on top of the 200. This is this is what kept on running. So, you know, uh, I got three and a half points on this trade, but it ran for 30, 30 more. Right? I got six on this one. This ran for 40 more points. So you need to be trying to find a way to get some of this. If you're going to take both trades, it's imperative, at least from a mental perspective, to be able to find a way to get more points out of your winners so that if you do take, you know, 5R isn't a big deal if it's, you know, uh, the, at small range, right? Say you've got a six-point range, you lose 30 points, okay? Uh, if you grab half of this a couple times, you mitigate that whole loss. Right, some kind of a auto a trailing stop or something. Um, there's a few of us working on different ideas for that. How we can kind of find a happy place in between, maybe not trying to get as big of a win rate, but making sure that if we do lose, maybe it's only a, a 2x loss or um, taking a break even instead of a 1r. You know, just different things. You know, um, we got a lot of people looking at this. I think we're going to come up with some neat ideas. All right, anything else? I don't know, I think I missed anything. Uh, all this information will be in the forum in case your links aren't working. I think we got the TradingView link fixed, but the videos. Was anybody else not able to see the videos from the link that I gave you? You couldn't see it? Okay, uh, I'll put different links in there. I, mean, I used that mega file Mega folder, and I don't know. All right, we'll get that figured out. All right, so that's been an hour. Uh, if you have more questions, whatever, hit me up. Uh, there's a few people that are, you know, already trading this. You can kind of see them in the back test. Kung Fu X, I think, is uh, he's been trading it. Uh, their YouTube channel, it's uh, Trading Busters, is the name of the creator. And again, you know, if they come after me, they come after me. I don't know, you know, what I, I've got this thing that I added to the, the Discord. If, if copyright material is on the Discord, they, there's a process they can go through. And if they, you know, follow the process, I'll take the stuff down. But if people have a bunch of material out there that's not copyrighted, then as far as I'm concerned, it's public domain and it's fair game. And I'm going to be sharing it here. So I found quite a bit of material <laughs> that's going to be coming out here Uh you know, shortly, some of you are going to recognize names you're going to know. And if they want me to take it down, they'll just have to go through the steps, you know, and I'll take it down. But otherwise, it's already out there. I didn't put it out there, but I'm going to, you know, try to share it to help us out. All right, I think that's it. Good week next week. It'll be interesting to see how this pans out. I uh, hope you do well. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will talk to you later. Okay, bye.